So we're here with uh, Fabian Hambüchen. Oh, and right. oh, ich habe auch in Deutschland gewohnt okay. und so. Um, und so. <laughs> und so. <laughs> so we can do the interview in German. <laughs> <laughs> But we're going to make you speak English, which your English is perfect. So, um, so first, let's talk about what are your impressions so far of the competition? Um, hard to express because every time I'm sitting in there, I have sweaty hands and I feel like 12 years Uh, before, you know, when I had my world championships here. So all the emotions are coming up and uh, yeah, but still it's a really nice competition. It's good organized, uh, good impression so far. I mean, you, you see like all the uh, excitement in the athletes' eyes because it's Olympic qualification. So it's really interesting to see. And especially like today, we had the Chinese guy competing and like the world champion on P-bars, he he messed up, so he's not in the final. That was, that was yeah. unbelievable. It's rubber you know? China all around because um, also their pommel horse champion from last year, Xiao Ruoting, he's also out because he fell. So all around China's. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy, crazy yeah. what happens here, but uh, still it's such a nice event and the atmosphere is just, uh, just crazy. Yeah, We're, it's such a good world so far. Just, yeah, every, the organizing and like the lack of injuries. Like no one's just landed on a mat and broken their ankle. Like other, uh, yes, <laughs> knock on all the wood. Um, so, what do you think of the Fujitsu system and the, as we like to call it, the robot judging? Uh, I'm not a fan of this new technology, but um, at the end, I I hope that gymnastics will get more and more fair and uh, that you can differentiate more the the athletes. You know. So I was talking to like. Uh, um, alias Pegan, he's mm -hmm. in the Athletes Commission, yeah. and we were talking about that because uh, we always have the problems that many gymnasts has almost the same e-score, and it's still the thing that the difficulty counts a lot. And um, I remember FIG president, former FIG president Bruno Grundy, after Worlds 2013, um, I got second on high bar after Epke Sunderland. And Bruno came over to me and said, what you did, your high bar, that was real artistic gymnastics and not circus. So the development of gymnastics is going more and more into, into kind of circus. So you always try just to make it higher, faster, um, more more difficult. So I don't like this development of gymnastics. But the Fujitsu system could give a change in that so that you can really see the difference in the e-score. But still, this is a sport where you are dependent of human being, you know, of judges. And uh, I think that's kind of tradition. And uh, I think that should stay forever. And I don't really like this, this new technology, not only in sports and in, in, in everyday life, you know, like all this Alexa stuff and whatever, mm -hmm. Ziri. Uh, I hate these things. You know, but uh, at least as long as Fujitsu will help to get gymnastics maybe more more clear and more understandable again, also for the spectators, then it's okay. So in a recent interview, you talked about how in the young German gymnast, gymnast population that they're not being as successful, and you attributed part of it to the use of Instagram. You said they would rather be on Instagram than training. Is that how you feel that the uh, new social media is contributing to German gymnastics? Not only to German gymnastics, all around the world. You see so many, so many young guys uh, posting a lot in their stories, whatever, and you think, wow, they are really strong. But whenever they get into a real competition, they mess up. So they're never consistent. They're just like doing their YouTube stuff and always make, make things looking easy and just, uh, yeah, as it was no problem for them, you know? But when it's a serious situation, they, they cannot concentrate really good or they are not consistent. So that's what I, what I don't like. And it's like all over the world. It's not only in Germany. But uh, so when I go into my gym and uh, see the young guys more and more on their phones instead of doing hard training, I'm like, what the hell's going on? You know, <laughs> so it's, it changed. But there are still a lot of young guys who work hard for their dreams. You know, it's not like that every young gymnast is doing that thing with social media. but. Uh, Still, it's different than like 12 years ago. Because social media is such an easy platform to be able to promote yourself and perhaps get more sponsors, do you think that maybe a lack of German gymnastics 
ascertaining sponsors um, for their gymnast is the reason that they are pushing for social media? Could be the reason, but I think as long as you have success in sports, it doesn't matter what your uh, social media appearance is about, you know? So um, I'm really happy that I got popular in Germany just because of gymnastics and not because of social media. Um, I really do not like people who earn a lot of money with just doing Instagram without any, any success in their life, you know, just selling some beauty stuff or whatever and they get sponsors and sponsors just because they have one million uh, people on Instagram, you know, so that's like, I, I can't get it. So I remember a few times when I got in touch with some influencer and talked to them, they asked me like, why, why don't you have so many uh, people following you on Instagram? I said, why? It's, it's around 50,000. Yeah, you could have like more than 300, 400, 500,000 if you would have done this in a serious way. And I said, what is a serious way for you? How much time do I have to spend for, for doing the social media stuff? And he was like, yeah, maybe a week every second month. I said, and I said, that is the problem. I don't have so much time for that. Why? You are an athlete. I said, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, you have enough of time. Uh, you have free time. You know, they compare it with... Free time with, for an <laughs> Yeah, because they compare it in Germany, especially. They only compare it with soccer. It's all about soccer in Germany. They and of barely course, practice in soccer compared to gymnastics. I mean, no shade on soccer, but like seriously, they barely practice compared to gymnastics. Yeah, that's true. But still, like the high professional guys, they also train every day, you know. But but still, they they think in their mind, their their uh, attitude is that athletes just do a few hours training in a day, and that's it. And I told him I was training every day around six hours. Then you go to a trainer for some massage and stuff. Mm -hmm. You have to take care of your body. You have to do some good food at home. It's not like just going into a restaurant or whatever, you know? So I told him I have no time. And by and next to gymnastics, I was studying or went to school. So, and he was still continuing like this. Yeah, that's stupid what you say. You could have, you could have life like just doing nothing and earn money with social media. And I was like, who are you? What did you, what did you reach in your life? Have you ever had a dream? Have you ever had a vision or something like that? And he was like, uh, I don't know what you mean, I, I have money. And I said, yeah, but that's not my intention of having a good life, right. you know? So yeah, it's changed. It changed a lot, but uh, I think if there are young guys, young gymnasts who really have a dream and really wanna work hard for that, there will be, there will be some maybe. <laughs> yeah. It's hard between like funding yourself, not getting distracted, because there's a consequence of going online too, because then you read people's feedback and they can say whatever they want to you. Yeah, so that's, that's yeah, stupid. that's hard. You mentioned that you went to university. What were you studying? Sports science. Okay, and do you use that in your life now to make a living or do you, um, you mentioned the fame that you had received just from being a gymnast. Like, what is your life like trying to make a living now? Um, I'm just about to finish uh, university, so I'm, I'm texting, I'm writing my bachelor thesis right now. I just started after, after London 2012 with that, and it took a while because you don't have a good system like in the US, like you can combine college and sports, you know. So in Germany, usually you have to decide between university and sports and I tried to combine it so I just put it, took a few classes in a week not the whole whole stuff so it took pretty long and I changed my study a little bit because I started with sports management but all this economic stuff was was not my thing you know I wasn't that interested in that so I changed to sports science which is really good but uh, it's not the thing I I need right now for, for my life or for my jobs you know I do a lot of things with, with the media. I'm working with, a, uh, with Discovery Channel. Oh, cool. So like with Eurosport mm -hmm. in Germany, um, they have the rights for broadcasting the Olympics. So I've been to, okay. to the Winter Olympics the last year as a reporter in the German house. And I will be in Tokyo next year as a so reporter cool. <laughs> and also an expert for gymnastics. Yeah. So that's a really, really cool thing. And that's just because I have a name in Germany. I got popular through the sports. And all the other things are like sponsorships, doing speeches, like motivation speech and stuff. 
but for my, for my future, because that is the thing, you don't know how long that will keep going, you know? So whenever it stops, I have my, degree. yeah, I have my bachelor degree, and I still can think about doing some, some classes and mental coaching and stuff, so that when I do my speeches, I can also give some workshops and stuff, or can go maybe to work with athletes, so that would be a thing, or I can get into the gym, where I need my, uh, my studies, you know? So, we will see. It's a good backup. Yeah, it's a good backup. It's a smart message, I think, for other gymnasts, too. It's like, Definitely. yeah, protect your brain, because it matters afterwards, and yeah. use it, because it matters afterwards. Yeah, especially this social media thing. You don't know how long, yeah, uh, like, all the, all the enterprises have attention for that. Maybe there's a, there's a time they say, we don't care about social media. Can't believe it right now, but you never know. It's like like a big blue which can mm -hmm. uh, break out, you know. You talked about how the U.S. has a good system where you can do athletics and earn your degree at the same time. And at one point, you had talked about coming to Michigan for maybe a semester. Is that something that you would still be interested, maybe in for a master's or something to do study abroad? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if I. If I still want to go to university after <laughs> graduating from the German university because I'm, I'm done with this stupid <laughs> learning and whatever. But um, I still love being in the US and uh, maybe I can come over to coach. I mean, when I've been to Michigan, of course, I was still uh, really ambitious to study and I was thinking about a guest semester and I really wanted to do it. Um, but I had no time at the end. It wasn't possible to combine this. But then I've been to California two years ago for holidays and I went to Huntington to Skats. Yeah, it's just the same. And uh, Jordan is also a good friend yeah. of mine, you know. So I was talking to him, uh, maybe being a coach there for, for a few months, whatever. And we, I was talking to um, the embassy in mm -hmm. Germany, how I can get the right visa for that and whatever. So that was kind of complicated, and, uh, but still maybe I can go over for, with this tourist visa and just go into the gym and just look around a little bit, help a little bit. So uh, that's the thing I would definitely still love to do, you know, staying in the US for more than just two weeks holiday, you know. Yeah, well, Jordan did just get the assistant job at University yeah, of Michigan, I know, so... Yeah, I know, He told me I should come back again. <laughs> uh, but I will be in the U.S. Uh, after Christmas for two and a half weeks. We'll visit a friend in Louisiana and then go up to Nebraska, where also is, a, you maybe know him, Andreas Hofer. Mm -hmm. He was a former Nebraska college gymnast, okay. and he was from Germany. He's the same age as me. And uh, now one guy from our gym, uh, Moritz, He's 20, 21. He turns 21 in February. He just went to college to Nebraska now. I helped him to get there, to get a scholarship and stuff. So he's now there and I will visit him and watch his first competition in January. Oh, I love that. So, so I will be in the US for two and a half weeks in December and January. So really looking forward to that. Oh, nice, great. Are there any skills that you've seen done here, a specific skill or like a vault that you're like, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen? Have you seen the Hong Kong guy in right now on Walt? He yeah. did this really sick one in the first. Yeah. It was awesome. That height, so far and so good. So that was, that was amazing. But there was also an Australian guy uh, on floor with triple double, which was really, really nice. Yeah. Or a Belgian guy, really young guy with uh, this one high bar, triple back in a pike in position. Pike. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, there's still it's some, some guys doing, doing crazy stuff, you know? So, but, uh, the level is getting higher and higher in gymnastics, so that's, that's really crazy to see. Today I was talking to our friend Coach Rick um, about this, and I was like, the higher the scale, they should just double the deductions. Then maybe we get the e-scores to make people do only gymnastics they can really do. What do you think? Would be in the possibility to get it like, yeah, more fair, but I don't know. Maybe with the Fujitsu system, if they can see really all the angles and stuff, because you cannot see if it's like a 30 degrees angle or whatever, you know. Yeah. So, but uh, especially on the women's side, the judges, they say, yeah, we can really see if it's one degree more or less. I said, yeah, 
for sure, you know. So with the system, <laughs> with the system, you could really be correct in this in this thing. So you don't need to double the uh, the penalties. But um, I read an article of was also an American guy, forgot his name. I, I read it in the International Gymnast magazine, um, and I put it into my, my bachelor thesis. Um, he showed a new system how to get back to a kind of 10-0 mm -hmm. system because he was watching uh, World 2017 in Montreal and he said there was no execution or just a few exec execution scores lower than 5-0. Uh, yeah. So he was asking like, why do we need 10 points for execution? So if you would low down to 5 or maybe 6 and then put the D score in it with a 5 to 6, maybe you can low that a little bit down as well, then you are like with your, uh, with your main score a little bit higher than 10, maybe 11, yeah. but with the usual execution you get never more than 10 points. So you know if you get close to a 10 or maybe a little bit over, then you know it was a perfect routine, so, which would be much more better for the spectators. Yeah. But still you have the thing with the execution and uh, you need yeah, correct scores. So here at the championships, we've seen on the men's side people doing triple backs like Nagorni, and then we've also seen people doing simple passes with just a round off back tuck. Do you think that there is value in having people from every country, no matter what their skill level is, or do you think that there should be a qualification system to get to Worlds? From the perspective of an athlete, I think it's great that everyone has the chance to get to World Championships whatever his discourse is about, you know. But uh, the judges, they have really hard work to do when they have like these complicated routines with skills like no one is doing anymore, you know. So that sometimes uh, takes a lot, lot of time. Like, I think it was yesterday, there was one, one group, they were always the last, even on vault, um, because the judges took so much time to get the score for them, you know, so that was a bit annoying as a spectator. I don't know how it would be as an athlete because sometimes you're, you're happy if you have a little bit more time to rest before the next routine. But, um, no, I think it should stay like this, that everyone has the chance to compete. And sometimes, of course, there are some continents like Africa where not so many gymnasts or not so many good gymnasts are but uh, they all should have a chance to get to Worlds or Continental Championships, whatever. So I think it's, it's good. Before we wrap up, is there anything that you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> I talked about so many things today here, you know, <laughs> so I'm not sure. I'm happy when I can uh, like rest my voice a little bit, which is not in the best shape anymore. But uh, especially after yesterday, we did the commentary for the German team for mm -hmm. television. That was, was that was crazy. crazy. We just, we just, yeah, can cannot explain this. That was just Maybe. like an up and down all the time. So many emotions, and now we're just hope that they make the qualification for Olympics. The the last burning question because uh -oh. we represent exactly because we represent the fans. So the fans would really like to know if you're single or not right now. I am. Unfortunately, I am. <laughs> No, not unfortunately. I mean, I turned 32 in a few weeks, so yeah, life could look like different, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm okay with that. I'm happy. I'm so busy. I have a lot to do, uh, and I think when my bachelor thesis is done, first check is okay, and then uh, yeah, we will see. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Really no problem. Thank you.